Alrighty, what's up guys? So another new sneaker pickup. This one, highly anticipated. Not necessarily the sneaker, but generally the brand. So New Balance has had their moment in the sneaker community in the last year or so between like 2020 and 2021 now. I'd even say late 2019 as well. But a lot of my early sneaker videos, so like 2018, 2019, are of New Balance sneakers. And you know, since then I sort of been in this phase of buying like super hyped up, more expensive Nikes and Jordans. But I love running into good New Balance deals, made in USA ones especially. And here is one recent pickup that I definitely want to show you guys. And over the last few months, I've actually made a few small ones as well that I'll likely sprinkle in once I'm done with this sort of unboxing clip and talk. But this one in particular, I came across on Grailed. And in my mind, it was a pretty crazy deal because I bought them for $18 and paid $20 for shipping, which is obviously more than what the sneakers are worth based on that $18 price. But the $20 shipping makes sense because these come from Toronto, Canada. So shout out to Canada. Um, so we're going to open these up and uh, talk about them really briefly. I figured it's not really worth going into an in-depth review because I'm not sure if people are looking for the sneaker as it is an older one. I address there real quick. Um, wrapped up in this yellow paper. So these didn't come with the original box, unfortunately. But if I had to guess when new, they definitely came with that classic blue and red New Balance tiny box, if you guys know what I mean. Here they are. They're a pair of New Balance 1300s. Uh, made in USA. And they're in like this orange sunburst like colorway. If you look at the condition on them, they look great. Look to be never worn. In the listing, he mentioned they were tried on and worn around the house, but that's pretty much it. And and I believe it. These are super, super clean. The laces are a little choked up. I'm going to do my thing and unlace them and lace them to my sort of specific standards, but I guess a little bit of information about these sneakers. These came out in 2013 as part of a day tripper pack, uh, is what New Balance was calling it back then. Essentially, it consisted of a bunch of 1300s, as well as a few other models. I believe the 996 was part of this day tripper pack. Pulling out my notes here, what I was able to find is that this day tripper collection was inspired by the great American tradition of cross-country motorcycle trips of the 1960s. Not sure how accurate that is because these are what an eight year old shoe now and coverage on New Balance back then really it was more niche. It's not quite as mainstream as it is today, but New Balance has always had these weird inspirations and stories behind uh, their various Made in USA releases over the years. And pretty much it's your suede and mesh uppers that you'd find on most New Balance uppers. The mesh is pretty standard. The suede quality on here is pretty decent. It's not quite as fluffy and plush as other made in USA New Balance sneakers compared to ones that I have in my collection or more recent ones. But I will say the suede quality is better than any sort of Nike or Adidas that you'll find right now. You get your various hits of white, uh, you know, the New Balance logo, the laces, the inner lining, tongue tag that says uh, classic 1300 made in USA. There's this insole, it's pretty thick, has NB 1300 stamped at the tag there. It has all these little ventilation holes, which is super cool. Midsole is this foam one. It looks to be a dual density, so the uh, the white end cap part is definitely more stiff than this orange part, which feels a lot softer. And then below is your rubber traction pattern, XAR1000, so I think that's the rubber compound they use on the outsole here. I'd have to double check. But yeah, overall, super cool. I think the colorway is pretty neat. More so a fall colorway, in my opinion. It kind of reminds me of like some Curry sneakers. There was this pair of Jupiter Orange New Balance 990 V4s that I've had my eye on like over the last few years, and this 1300 actually reminds me of it a lot. This is my first pair of 1300s. I've had a pair of the 1400s in the past, and they look very, very similar. Um, I've sold those off because they're in a size 10, which is a little too big for me, which I guess is a great segue to. I got these in a US 9.5. I find that to be my true New Balance size. I hear of people either sticking true to size or going down half a size for a more snug retro fit. At the end of the day, it's up to you. Whatever you're able to get your hands on, I think you'd be fine going either way. For me, I find true to size to be perfect. If there's anything additional I could think about these sneakers, I'll definitely be sure to include it in this video, but I figure it's worth highlighting a few other New Balance pickups I've made in the last few months that you guys might not have seen. So I'll be splicing in those clips right now. Alrighty, so we're going full voiceover mode up to this point because if you look at the timestamps on these, the dates are all over the place. So I guess going in chronological order, this one was on July 24th, today is May 24th, 2021, so almost a full year since I've picked these up. 
better late than ever. You guys might have seen this in an old video, maybe not, but I figured it's worth showing. So I got a really good deal on these. These are a pair of the New Balance 998s, dubbed as the Pony Hairs. I had to dig into the archives to find the receipt, but I saw I got them off of a seller on Mercari for $43 plus $10 shipping. So I paid $53 bucks for them, which is not bad at all. I know at one point these were popping up at discount shops like Marshalls and I think Ross's throughout the US, but it was a point in time before people really were about this made in USA New Balance life, so a lot of people didn't even know and would look past them. For someone like me that's always been a big fan of the made in USA line, I always try to find a good deal on GRs like this one, and you know for 53 bucks you really can't beat it. So. Really what separates this sneaker from any other 998 is the use of materials, so aside from like the black suede, you get this pony hair that can be found at the toe, up the tongue, and at the back heel. Definitely very interesting, definitely really weird to feel in hand, but if you look at it from a distance you can't even tell that it's a pony hair, which is interesting. Pony hair is typically associated with high quality fashion stuff, so like think scarves and items like that. So seeing them on a sneaker is really weird, but at the same time I know a lot of like high fashion brands utilize pony hair. I think being in a muted all black pretty much with hits of white and grey reflective material is really well done. And I've actually worn them a few times since picking them up. Uh, not much else to say then, you know, they're classy, they're classic, and they're very quiet when it comes to, you know, staying muted, but also being loud at the same time if that makes sense. So moving on here, a little later into 2020 here, it's November 24th, which I believe was around Thanksgiving. Anyway, you could tie grew out this disgusting mustache, you can see like half of my face. The thing was nasty, I don't even know why I did it, but I guess, you know, being at home for so long, you don't really care. But anyway, this was a sneaker that I've always wanted, not particularly the colorway, but the model. Um, so it's a 990 V1, which is the very first sort of made in USA New Balance to do it all, or to start the whole thing. So the 990 V1 came out in 1982, and it was essentially the first sneaker to retail at $100. Um, and at that time, $100 is a lot of money. And essentially, it was that gray New Balance that started it all. That same look that you see throughout a lot of New Balance flagship models is, you know, it came from this one. And this one in particular, I believe, released in like 2012. There wasn't a lot of big New Balance coverage back in the day. It was more so like a niche sort of market. But this one in particular, the previous owner had got these from a New Balance outlet, and they were marked as a factory second, meaning they're essentially like a B grade if we're talking Nike terms. And they had a box price of 120 bucks, which I guess in hindsight isn't a lot for a made in USA New Balance, but for the average consumer, it is a lot of money, 120 dollars, and that's on sale. Anyway, it's a pair of the New Balance 990 V1s in this sort of red, black, and gray colorway. I bought these pre-owned, another Mercari deal. Uh, similar to the 998s we just saw, I got these ones for like 25 bucks plus like $8 shipping, so around 30 or so bucks for these, which is not bad. Condition is not bad on them either. The uppers are a little dirty, as were the soles. You could see me touch them sort of, not grossly, but you could see me just putting slight fingers on them before I actually sanitize them and clean them, and you know. I'm not sure if I'm throwing in any clips here beyond this unboxing one, but these did turn out pretty nice, and I actually worn them a few times too throughout the last few months, so... Definitely a nice ad, definitely not the first 990 V1 color I'd go for, um, but that being said, if I'm able to come across any more 990 V1 deals in the future, I like the way they feel on my feet, um, we'll definitely pick up more. So here's the last one for now, this was back in late January of this year, so at least we're in 2021, thank god. But I got these from Seneca Sneakers, I'm looking at it, I really like this festive box that they have. Anyway, I caught these off of Twitter actually. I follow all these Twitter sneaker pages that throw up good deals on sneakers. And pro tip, if you want to stack your collection at a baller discount, definitely follow like Sneaker Shout, Sneaker Steal, etc. You know, they're posting deals all the time. And this was the case with this pair. This is a pair of New Balance RC1300s. I don't know the exact sort of history behind this model, I know they teamed up with like the Tokyo Design Studio or whatever to create this alternate or hybrid of the 1300 model. So this specific model is not a made in USA model, but to be honest, if you blindfolded me or didn't tell me about this model beforehand, I would assume that it is because the quality of materials on here is really good. So throughout the uppers is like this midnight magenta color or whatever it is. It looks very similar to that sort of purplish New Balance 992. I think this is a great alternative to that sidebar. I don't really think there's a way to judge mesh, but the suede is super plush, super soft, super buttery in hand. I love that oversized N New Balance at the mid panel. 
The thing that separates this from the 1300 that you saw earlier in the video is that chunky midsole. So it uses that end cap reveal sole that we've seen on new hybrids like the 997S. Super thick, super chunky, super comfortable. Um, and then the outsole is this Vibram rubber outsole, which it's super cool to see these sort of big name rubber compounds make their way onto sneakers like this. So would I pay $150 retail that these had a suggested price of? Probably not but on sale for 60 bucks, definitely can't beat it. And also shout out to the grout fit that I'm wearing in that unboxing clip. Clearly the cinematic value didn't really matter too much to me. I'm also sitting on the floor, which is pretty weird. Um, so yeah, that's why I kind of threw this into sort of an unboxing compilation. And I think that's a good way to leave this video for now. Like I mentioned, today is May 24th of 2021. Between late January and now, I've picked up a bunch of New Balances that I think I'm going to highlight in other videos. I just want to make sure that this backlog of videos that I've had in the past make their way onto the internet somehow and you guys are able to check it out. So definitely leave me a thumbs up if you like content like this. I promise you I'm trying to make more and more of it, so please stay tuned, subscribe, and definitely check into these videos because I'm trying to upload as fast as I can. Uh, what else can I call out real quick? Follow me on Instagram at Stuff Don't Likes. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.